If you're looking for a hardcore, heavy duty, ultra sealed spinning reel, you better be looking at one of these. So today we're gonna to be looking at the Vanstall VR50, the Vanstall X2, and the brand new Tsunami Salt X2 4000. And you may be saying, hey, why do you have a $900 reel and a $400 reel in the same comparison? The Salt X2 has some killer features and specs that it shares with the twice the price Vanstall X2, so that's why. So everyone knows the legendary Van Stalls. They've developed an incredible reputation over the years. They are proven, they have been tested in the salt time and time again. They've had sand thrown on them and they just laugh and ask for more. So we're gonna see if this brand new Tsunami Salt X2 can hang with these two legends. So let's start right out of the gate with the Salt X2. Now this is not gonna be a full review. I've already done that. You can see that right here. If you wanna go watch that, you definitely should. I think it's a great reel. But this is gonna be strictly a comparison between this and the two Van Stalls that we talked about. So all three of these reels share a similar body. So they're all machined 6061 bar stock aluminum, but there is a slight difference. The Saltex 2 you can see kind of has some screws on the side of it. So there is a big side plate here. The Van Stalls, both the VR and the X2 don't do that. So this whole piece right here is threaded comes with a wrench that you put on there if you need to take the side plate off, but there's less fasteners. And I mean, in theory, there's less places for water to get into. But another similarity, all three of these reels have stainless steel gears. When you spend money and you're getting a reel of this quality that's made for stuff like this, some hardcore environments, you're gonna get stainless steel gears across the board. The main shaft though is where things get a little bit different. So both the X2 and believe it or not, the Salt X2 both have solid titanium main shafts. Titanium is rust and corrosion proof. It cannot happen. The Vanstall VR does not have a titanium main shaft. So it could be a little more susceptible to water damage as far as corrosion and rust like that on the main shaft than the other two reels. Now let's talk about bales real quick. So the VR comes with a bale wire on the reel in the box, does come with a conversion kit in the box if you'd like to take that off and convert it to a baleless reel. As far as the X2 is concerned, you have to make that decision at the time of purchase. So you either buy it bailed and you stick with bailed for the rest of the reel's life, or you buy baleless and you stick with baleless. The Salt X2 also has a bale out of the box, which is removable, but it does not come with the conversion kit in the box, which is kind of annoying. You do have to register the reel to gather the warranty on it, and then for $9.95 in shipping, they will send you the conversion kit. I mean, it would've been nice to have that in the box, but it's still very nice to have the option to remove that bell wire if you would like to. Now, as far as bell wire is concerned, the, the Salt X2 does have a titanium bell wire, which is cool. I mean, it's a flashy thing to say that there's titanium in that place. Is it a big deal? I mean, maybe, maybe not. I've never heard of the Van Stalls having bell wire issues related to the material. Uh, but these are just aluminum, I'm assuming, both on the X2 and on the VR. Another place there's titanium on the Salt X2 is the spool lip right here. So if you think about where the line makes contact with the spool, it's obviously gonna be laying on the spool, but every time you make a cast, it's gonna be in contact with that spool lip. So I kind of get the idea for that there. Uh, again, it's one of those things, I don't know if that provides a ton of value. Uh, I've never heard of spools rusting in that area or having corrosion issues in that area. Now, if it was an old reel that was tucked away, you know, never rinsed off and it was tucked away and there was salt sitting on it, I could see that being an issue. But for most people that are taking care of their gear, I don't think that's an issue. But again, more titanium is kind of, I mean, kind of better in my opinion. As far as drag's concerned, you have 25 pounds on this 4000 Salt X2, which is the same as the VR50 and the X250, so no difference there. Let's talk about retrieve real quick. So on the van stalls, if you're familiar with them, on the opposite side plate from the handle, you obviously see there's no holes, there's no screws, there's no nothing. So you have to make that decision at the time of purchase. Are you gonna reel left hand or are you gonna reel right hand? Which for 99% of people, that's never an issue. It's not like, that's not something you're changing very often, you know? Oh, today I'm gonna reel on my right side, no. You reel on the left side or you reel on the right side. It's that simple. But on the Saltex 2, they do give you the option. You can remove this cap 
you can remove the reel handle and you can switch the retrieve on this reel. So something to note there. The Van Stahl guys and Van Stahl themselves would argue that this is another point that water can enter the reel at, which is probably true. Now there's a gigantic seal underneath this. So I could see, you know, it'd be hard for water to get through there. I mean, look at the size of that seal. You see that O-ring there. It would be hard for water to get in there. However, it is another access point. So staying in the seal conversation, Tsunami is marketing this reel with 20 internal seals. And I know that sounds crazy, but these add up quick, especially with so many parts in a reel like this. So that side plate we were just talking about, one, two, was that three, four screws holding it together? And there's an O-ring under each one. So there's four just on the side plate. I'm sure there's one right there. That's five at least. Flip it over. I know there's one on that side too. So there's six. And I know they're spread all out through the reel and the drag on the rotor, on the shaft, all that. But we just counted six just on the outside of this part of the reel. So they can add up quick. That doesn't necessarily mean it's sealed more than a van stall. Van stalls are just more simple with less moving parts and just parts in general. But let's be real. These are all incredibly sealed reels that they're totally splash proof. You can dunk them. Water's not gonna make it inside of these reels. Now the van stalls, on the other hand, have far less seals. So I pulled the schematic of the VR and searched O-ring and search seal and see what I came up with and added them up. So this VR50 has 15 things in the schematic called a seal or called an O-ring. And one thing I really like about these reels too is they sell maintenance kits for these reels. They acknowledge that this is a lifetime reel that you're gonna have for a very, very long time. And with that, there's gonna be pieces and components of this reel that are going to wear when you're fishing it for that long. So they include nine seals, and it depends on you know which model and what size you're getting, but most of them include nine seals. So it's three different seals, and they give you three of each. And so how much you need to service the reel depends on how you fish it. But 12 to 18 months is kind of what they recommend for most people, but they do say that you might have to service it multiple times if you really fish a lot. But they acknowledge that it's gonna be a lifetime reel, and there's gonna be mechanical movement around some of those O-rings that's gonna wear them down and make them fail long-term. So I love the support system in place that helps you keep this reel and keeps it working for a really long time. Now I also pulled the schematic for the X250 and this reel bailed in this size. I counted nine different seal slash O-ring names on that schematic list. So now comes the ultimate question, right? Of these three reels, which one should you be buying? I think there's a few things at play here to determine which reel is right for you. If you're someone that really, really needs and wants a reel like these Van Stalls that have been around for so long, you fish from the beach, you fish tarpon off the beach, you fish whatever, but you're fishing off the beach in the surf, the reel is gonna take spray, it might get submerged, it's gonna be around sand. So if you're one of those people that needs a reel like that, but doesn't have 520 bucks, I mean, that's what this VR50 costs. It is not cheap. But if you don't have that money to spend and need to save a few bucks, I do think this is a great reel. It feels great in the hand. It feels heavy duty. It's a little smoother, I mean, right out of the box, which I think is a mood point because they do break in. Uh, our rep was just in the other day with a couple of these that he's been fishing for a while and they honestly, they felt like butter. They felt much smoother and this is already smooth out of the box, but it definitely felt smoother than this. So I don't think smoothness should be, you know, an important factor in deciding which reel to buy. The van stalls are definitely stiffer, but same thing. They will loosen up as you fish them. The more you fish them, the more they're going to loosen up. Now, if you've got a little bit more cash to spend and you're a little skeptical of a new product, I mean, this is, this is a new iteration. It's not a brand new reel. They did have the Saltex that they released in 2018, 2019, I believe. But if you're a little skeptical of a newer product, I mean, it is what it is. And you got a little more cash sitting around. I mean, the van stall is probably going to be a great choice. You're never going to be mad that you spent the money on a reel like this or even the X2 for that matter. You might get in trouble with the wife. You should talk about those things before you buy it. I'm just kidding, what do you, whatever you do at home is up to you. But I mean, you're gonna get what you pay for. You're getting a reel from a company that's been around for a very long time. Like I said, they have proven themselves for you know 30 years plus in this game. They are a real only company. They make pliers, it's not a big deal but they are a real only company that has put so much time and money and effort into designing and engineering this reel. And every year, I mean, 
well, every couple of years, I guess, that they come out with a change or something, which is not that often compared to other brands. But they've done the research, they've listened to what customers are saying, they know what things are failing, and they fix them, and that's just how it is. They're a real company that takes this seriously. Tsunami's got their hands in a lot of things. They're a tackle company, they're not a real company. So you could say that they don't have the time, money, whatever you wanna put it, the attention to give to make it the best possible reel out there. You could assume that. Their focus is not only in this reel. Their focus is in rods, their focus is in hooks, their focus is in bags, their focus is kind of all over the place. It's all in fishing, but it's kind of all over the place. But I still think it's a great reel, and you will not be mad if you need to save a few bucks and get one of these. I think you're really gonna like it. That's it, guys. Let us know what you think in the comments. Are you gonna buy one of these reels? Would you buy the Saltex over one of the van stalls? We wanna hear from you down in the comments. If you liked the video, please like it. It really helps the channel and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any future content. That's it, guys. We'll see you and we'll catch you in the next video.